Oh, uh, yeah. And it becomes more of a reality. Yeah. Change is good, though. <laughs> you got to remember that. Change is good. No, I can keep on talking to myself. I have an issue. Yeah, I'm sure I'll make a lot of no. I'm sure you will, and it, it's good. It can be invigorating if you let it be. <laughs> We're on. Thank you. <laughs> We're on, madam. We are. All right. May we call the meeting to order, please? I think we're ready to move along. Those we're missing um, Mary Catalano, uh, who's unable to be with us today. And today, actually, we are honoring Louise Curley. Yay! Who, yes. Louise is moving on. She's moving out of town. And this will be her last board meeting with us. So in her honor, we have some fresh fruit over here. We welcome guests. You're That's welcome beautiful. to help yourself. And there are some cheese and crackers on the table. Please don't be shy. Get up and just slide it down because we know... No, <laughs> don't need to be shy. So, and we also uh, have another announcement, and it's sad. This one, I think, what both are sad. We're going to miss Louise. That's sad, but it's good for her that she's moving on and finding, moving closer to her family. Yep. So, and change is good, Louise. Now, can I add something? You can. Uh, it really is sad. Today's the first sad day. And I am looking forward to moving to the Willow. Uh, but, and I've been here since 1956. But uh, I was the wellness coordinator in Concord. And when I retired, I was at home a couple of days ago. I got a phone call to be on the board here. And after I was on the board a year, I thought, gee, we should have a weekly blood pressure clinic here. So the past five years have been absolutely marvelous. I thank all of you enough, and I really think that we have a, a wonderful, wonderful senior center here. So, I think we owe you that. thanks. Yes, we do owe you thanks. You've done a lot. Oh, thank you. And there was a lovely reception for her at the yes. Blood Pressure Clinic. Yep. Um, what, two weeks ago now? Yeah. So. And I feel compelled to mention that, you know, the Blood Pressure Clinic is very successful, Louise, and Mostly that's because you're there every single week. You have really made it work. We had more than 600 people visit the clinic last year. That's, it is. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. And Barbara and I are back a long way because kids went to <laughs> More so kids that went to yep. Evergreen Acres and had Barbara Mine camp. Mine did too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and look at she's still serving. I know. Serving yep. Carrots. She yeah. still is so cute. <laughs> like I say, I came with the place. <laughs> <laughs> but she has a new name now. It's Elvira. Oh. Elvira. <laughs> the Elvira. fall is that she's gaining a reputation. <laughs> and we have one other announcement, and this one also is kind of sad, but maybe good for him. But Chris Simone has yeah. resigned from the board. Yes. And so that um, gives us a vacancy, another vacancy, so, which we will get to later <laughs> on in our, our meeting. Yeah. Are there other announcements? Anyone? No? I have a couple of others. I know, you know Chris's resignation was one. But I also wanted to mention the fact that there is, Emmett is doing one of his educational sessions in Westminster a week from tomorrow. It is the 22nd. After much ado, we thought it was the 15th, but we're all on board now. I think we know it's the 22nd. And a few of us are attending that. So um, it's an opportunity. It's not long. It's in the morning only. You're done by noon. And um, it's usually an opportunity to find out what's been, what's new, any changes that have been made, you know, Emmett always has good ref recommendations and regarding best practices and that's what we strive here on this council to, to follow and to help establish, help establish best practices, so. All right, no more? 
Last call for announcements. Well, I should mention that um, there we go. Paula Bella asked if he could come at 3 o'clock. Oh, yeah. And I thought it would be nice if we could accommodate him whenever he does come. Thank Even you. Even though he's technically on at right. 5A. Yep. So we, when we get to that, we'll probably get to new business. We'll skip, them. skip around a bit, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, I need to um, go back a little bit because I jumped right into announcements in honor of Louise. But we do have a quorum, if I'm not mistaken. We have guests, Tina and Barbara, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And a, a reminder again, this is an open meeting, and we do adhere to the open meeting law. So moving on, anyone else have anything to offer before we get into accepting the minutes from the last meeting of August 10th? You go what? Yes, you do. You know. <laughs> yeah. We need to uh, have a motion on the floor on the floor to accept the minutes of the August 10th meeting. So moved. Thank you. A second. second. Jean. Oh. And we have another guest. Is that Nancy? Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Help yourself to the refreshments. They're in honor of Louise, who is attending her last Council on Aging meeting, sadly. But happy for her. New things, new ventures coming. So. All right, if we can go back to accepting the minutes, we have a, mo a motion, motion on the floor that has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Thank you. She got here just in time for the friend's report, just to support you, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> so, could you on? <laughs> it's the friend's okay. report time. All right. Um, well, we're trying to keep our programs going in spite you know, of the fact that we need a kitchen, but we are making plans to work. We thought we wouldn't do anything because of not having a kitchen and it would be hard, but then we decided that we hate to lose the people that come. And so, you know, we want to encourage them that we're still here and active. So we decided that in October, we're going to have an Oktoberfest, but it's going to be a potluck. Now, I know a lot of people say, I don't cook anymore, I don't want to cook, but since this is a social thing, come be with your friends and neighbors and make new friends. Uh, and this is the only way we can do it. Luncheon. Luncheon. I'm sorry? Yes, lunch. Lunch. Yes, a lunch, I'm sorry. And um, you need to sign up. You can sign up in the Council on Aging office or call them, please. And um, Three. I'm not going to ask you to mention what you're going to bring because the people working at the desk have other things to do. They can take your number and that you're coming. And I think that's fine. Make, just make something that you think people would enjoy. So we'll have 32 casseroles and no salads or bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, so I've peeked at the list already, and there's a little bit of a variety already on there. Oh, good. Right. Salads, some salads. What's the date? Sometimes people want to try different the things. The 14th of October. 14th. October 14th, correct? Did you tell them the date? Yeah, she told me. Did you tell them the date? She just did. Oh, she no. Well, that's only because I saw the list earlier, <laughs> yeah, about an hour ago, and it's fresh up here. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we hope to see a lot of people there and to enjoy themselves. And we'll supply the paper goods and forks and things like that, so, and drinks. Um, then the next thing we're planning, of course, is the veterans' lunch. And we didn't want to give that up either, so we're thinking, um, we're, well, we had asked the Shoba Tech students to cater it, and we thought they could come here. Now we've decided that maybe, uh, Nancy's been looking into other places, but I'm thinking that the best bet would be to go to Neshoba Tech for the luncheon, because the students are there already, and they have the kitchen, and they have a room that we can use. 
So um, we're working on that right now, and you'll get more news on that later. And the date for that is November 18th? 18th, yes. November 18th. So just keep looking for where it's going to be. We're planning on having it. It's just... I just to backtrack a little bit is, I believe it was Pam that came up with the idea of trying the Littleton High School because we have used the high school before when they have a spaghetti luncheon for us. Mm -hmm. So the school department was all for it, except it had to start at 1 o'clock. I called the tech, and they can't do it at 1. Mm -hmm. The students have to be on their way home by 2. So it was a great idea, but it didn't work. So now we're back to square one and two and three <laughs> of the churches and the tech. I spoke to the tech earlier before I came here, and they are going to check with the superintendent and see. Um, Kelly Clenshaw, the superintendent here, said that if you scheduled it for a Wednesday that they were doing uh, <coughs> yeah. the education for the teachers, you yeah. could start at 12. Yeah, you know, we talked to him already yeah. and went through all of this, and it turned out that with the, the dates, it's was not we just the couldn't days. do it. It was sad, I mean, because it's so it's a wonderful spot. But that's not saying we won't ask him for another time. Because yeah. right. well, he was really open when we were talking to him at your delightful anniversary party yeah. for but the also, friends. There Thanks. Wasn't Thanks. any Wednesday in November oh. that we could do it. It was no Wednesday no. that they could, the school department could do it. We could do it in October or December, but that's not Veterans Day, so. Yeah. So we're sticking with November and hoping that um, we'll find a place. Yeah. I mean, and I'm assuming that we'll get the tech. That's you're number talking, one on my list. You're talking about over 100 people, right? Yes. And other than that, we haven't gone much further because we're waiting to see what happens. And I mean, we have ideas of what we, we already have a list of things we want to do. It's just a matter of can we? So we're going to wait and see. Okay. I heard rumors about a fashion show. Yes, you did. And we do plan to have that too. And that will be, um, I'm looking closer to November. And can't go without that. <laughs> Good. And I'm wondering, is there anything else? How many people attended the... Um, the anniversary party. Ninety-seven. I just wonderful. wanted to highlight that because, yep. and thank you again. Yes. It was a wonderful, wonderful. Everybody event. that I spoke. Yep. Everybody she had a so grand hard. time. She worked so hard. Yes, and you know, in spite of the heat, it was not the best day weather-wise. As far as I mean, it wasn't raining, but it was very hot and humid, and I think everyone still enjoyed it and was comfortable. Yeah. Yes. And it was just a wonderful. Good food. Oh. It was how amazing. Did, how did it get up to that um, that number? How Aren't you limited it to fifty? <laughs> <laughs> this was the this was the Kimball thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and there were there were selectmen there, yeah. and um, Jim R. Sierra was there. Fire chief. The fire chief. Superintendent yes. of school. We got, had, we got a we got an award. I always say that for everything up to your feet. Yeah. I will say that you know I Keith did was there. It. Mm -hmm. I did organize it, but it was Kimball's staff that made it all come together. They oh, did a great job. They did. they did. It was really, really nice. It was a wonderful event, great social event, and the, it was nice to see so many people, including seniors, out there. Right. And they provided such nice transportation to and from the parking lot. They were very gracious. I can't get over all the land they have. <laughs> <laughs> all really that hidden. Yeah. I was told that that road eventually was going to be a water park. They were going to build a water park in there. Mm, amazing. And as I'm about that. to get my ice cream, Barbara calls me and says, you've got to come. We've got to take a picture. <laughs> you have to come. My ice cream's going to melt. I don't care. You have to come. <laughs> I get, oh, does that mean I have to take you for ice cream one day? Yes, yes you do. <laughs> oh, no, I should have said no. Uh, All right. <laughs> okay. Well, again, thank you, friends. Thank you. You're well. very helpful to us and wonderful to everybody and everyone in Littleton, actually, all the seniors. All right, moving on to old business. <coughs> uh, 
um, update on the kitchen project. <laughs> Speaking of having events, <laughs> no, or not having events in our our uh, multi-purpose area or off from the kitchen. Well, as Barbara has indicated, the kitchen is not done. It actually is not started. We are now in the third round of bids. I've been working with PMBC and we reduced the scope this time around since all the bids had been too high. Um, and the 22nd, September 22nd at noon is when the bid opening will be. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping we have a contractor there. What date? 22nd September. of September. Of September. Right. Bids open then? Yeah. And when do they close it? Is it a week? No, no, that's when they open. Oh, they they open the bid. They manually they open the bid that has, okay, yeah. got it. Thank you. Uh, and if it follows the, the way other projects do very shortly, PMBC would then select a contractor and vote. Well, let's just all say a little prayer. Has, has anything come in yet? I don't know. Is the PMBC's no. meetings open? Are there? Yes, the PMBC meetings are open. They're usually on Wednesday. We all should evening. probably attend and. What, what is the date of the meeting? School them. <laughs> I don't know what the next meeting is after the bid opening. Or did you want one before the bid opening? I, before. I was just wondering when their next meeting was. We can look it up online. If you look yeah. it up online, they, they, they probably have an agenda. their agenda on there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Good, thank you. I That's a good idea, hope. Susan. I think perhaps visibility is good. Well, but they've dropped the ball three times now, or twice. and. They want to put it off, and they don't think it's important, and or at least that's the sense that I'm getting from what I'm hearing. And it is important. No, oh, it's it extremely is. important. Um, it's amazing. You the may not, Susan. You better talk with Pam because it, we've revised what we're doing, so we're cutting it into three different phases, and doing only the essential I, stuff first. And I'm so in forth. on it. And, I know. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and they, I guess, pretty much agreed to to do that. And it will allow it will allow for some bidding that wasn't allowed before. So yeah, but yes, they removed the decamp certification, which is a but they don't average um, right requirement that's now out, which should make it easier for someone who wants to do the job to do it. Uh, and they're also putting a placeholder on the um, town meeting that's upcoming to cover um, the stove. Okay. We, we had the stove in as an alternate, might be in, might not, depending on how much money the contractor feels like he needs to do the actual work. So they put a placeholder in on that. That's good. So Colentro negotiated that with Bonnie. Okay. Anything else about the kitchen? <coughs> okay, we're ready to move on, I think, to the needs assessment. and. Um, I think everyone has received electronic copies <laughs> of the report from UMass, which is exciting. Yes. And Pam has well, it. Everybody's read all 111 pages, right? No. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it so is. I am very happy to announce that we have received, received the final version. It does run um, a little over 100 pages, about 110 pages. Um, it's very comprehensive. This is, I believe, something that's going to really help us to do some planning for the next five years for sure, maybe even for 10 years. Um, it is full of graphs, um, excellent information, all broken down by age group. So you can see how the 50 to 60 year olds responded, how the uh, 60 to 80 year olds, and then the plus 80s. Um, very, very good information here. and. Uh, I would urge anyone to take a look at it. We will be posting it online. There will be hard copies available in the library and in our office for people to view. Um, this is, has been, I think, very much worth all the effort that we put in. And I, I would just like to point out that the Needs Assessment Subcommittee started meeting in, I believe, November of 2013. So it's taken a long time to get to this point. But uh, I'm very confident that the information that's in here is um, accurate. I trust the Gerontology Institute for their methods and their scrupulousness in working with this. So I think it would be really useful for us going forward. Can you mention also the um, Dr. Mutchler's date, Mutchler's date 
yes. when she's going so to be. So Dr. Mutchler is going to be appearing before the Board of Selectmen at their meeting on the 21st of September. That's not tonight, but a week from tonight. And she will be doing the formal presentation to them. Uh, they all have copies of this, but she will do an actual presentation and final report and readout on this to the Board of Selectmen. Then the following week, on Tuesday the 29th, we have scheduled a public meeting with again Dr. Mutchler. That will be downstairs in room 103. And that will be the opportunity for people to ask questions and to really delve into this. I don't think that's gonna be possible at all in the Board of Selectmen's meeting because they're very busy. But that will be our opportunity to really ask a lot of questions of Dr. Mutchler. And, uh, and I would, for anyone who is daunted by the 112 pages, I would suggest that you read the executive summary, um, read the recommendation portion near the back, and, and in particular, look at the comparison section of comparing us to the other COAs. Uh, and then you can always backfill later and go back in and, and cherry pick and read about housing or transportation questions or health questions or long-term care questions. How can we access that? Uh, it is going to be available online. There will be a hard copy in the library. There will be a hard copy in our office. And those members of the board who are interested, I can make hard copies available to you. They Part of the contract was they were delivering us X number of hard copies. It is very difficult, not very difficult, but it is difficult to read all of that online mm -hmm. and to keep it going. I, you know, I think I'm going to borrow a hard copy to go through it once. I have it. I've already copied it online into my Adobe, so I can bring it up, but I find that reading it is tedious. Tedious, mm -hmm. and you're trying to keep the thing. So it is something that uh, you might want to look up a hard copy more quickly. And it is hard to read straight through, which is why I suggested reading the executive summary to get the gist of it, right. read the recommendations, and then things that catch your interest, go back and just look that stuff up to see the, and the I supporting data. would encourage any um, viewers of this meeting to really access the information and participate in the meeting with uh, Dr. Mutchler on the 29th. It would be... It will behoove us members of the Needs Assessment Committee to have read it before the 29th. I think it would be nice if you could provide a copy yeah. for us. Yes. So, it is tedious. <laughs> I would try get to some copies from her on the 21st. Um, and then once it's accepted by the Board of Selectmen, then we can post it online. Okay. <coughs> there you go. Thank you. That's exciting. It the is kitchen's exciting. a little upsetting, but this is very exciting. exciting. It helps, us, helps motivate us and, to keep and going. And I think people's minds will be blown by some of the, yes. some of the things. We were just looking, I was reading mine before the meeting, and some of us were just sitting here and talking, and just some of the recommendations, some, some of the realities that 40% of the population of Littleton in 2035 will be 60 or older. That's an awful lot of a community. And, uh, and the number of people under 25,000, those kind of uh, things, and the needs that they're going to have and do have right now, it's just absolutely amazing. Well, a good example of that, Bob, is we all were very aware that there are people out there taking care of people in their homes generally parents or maybe a spouse. Um, for that 50 to 60 age group, 46% said that they had taken care of someone within the last five years who was either disabled or frail. Half of the respondents were in that situation. Numbers far in excess of what we thought and what we have on our radar. So it, this has a lot of implications for us in terms of what we can do to right. reach out and to provide services. And I'll be talking, obviously, with the selectmen about funding for that. Any other comments or questions about the needs assessment? It's an, a, an exciting month, I think, September is, is going to end up being, so. And we welcome people to the, um, that meeting on the 29th. Okay, moving on to new business. This is where we're going to jump right over in A, which is Paul, <laughs> and wait until he gets here. <laughs> so if we can go to the membership subcommittee recommendation. I just want to preface this by saying 
that at our meeting in August, um, people were given copies uh, of draft job descriptions for the chairperson, the vice chair, the secretary, and a subcommittee chairperson. And he, we wanted to um, have them reviewed. And so we'll hear from the membership subcommittee about this. And, and I everyone think everyone has copies, I mean, another set of copies for you in the back of your packet. I didn't get a packet. Oh. We got the last one. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and I. If you don't have an extra one, I can get it later. I just want to make sure the book I, gets one. No, I had enough for everyone, but um, I gave away the agenda on this to Barbara. That's okay. Thanks. Okay. I think, Jean, you're on. Yep. Uh, the mem membership subcommittee realizes after completing the COA member job descriptions that responsibilities for officers have not yet have not been clearly stated other than very brief mention of a few responsibilities in the rules and regulations. We, the membership subcommittee, feel strongly that these job descriptions will help any board member who is willing to accept office duties. We welcome your input in our anticipating getting these in place so they can be included in the orientation manual. Can we please start with the review of the chair job description? Okay, and as Pam just said, everyone has copies of these in their packet. They're one page. There's not one of them is more than one page. So, can we address the chair job description? Any comments or questions people have about that? something about replacing the chair? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You're stuck with me for a while. <laughs> I would move that the description of the uh, chair be accepted as right, presented. Second. Thank you, Susan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Thank you, Bob and Susan. So we'll move on to the vice chair, which is one page also, a little less on the page. But, and Louise, you've served as vice chair. I don't know whether you have any thoughts about it. Patty is the current vice well, chair. Well, as the new vice chair, and actually the draft you gave us at the August meeting, I went home and having been an editor of a lot of state regulations, I perused them pretty heavily <laughs> and taken a few subcommittee jobs since I was on this board um, and we kind of did things by the seat of our pants but I have to admit we didn't do too bad no you didn't um, <laughs> I have to compliment Barbara and Jean these are very well written extremely well written by the way and they're very clear they're very precise and nobody on the board should be afraid to take up any position that's offered to them, either whether it's vice chair, secretary, or chair, or be on a subcommittee, because it's very clear what we can do. And it's not complicated. And there is so much support on the board that we ought to be able to perform any function that's assigned. So I would actually submit that we approve all of them. That's my opinion on this. So you girls did a wonderful job. Excuse me, you women did a wonderful job. And I compliment you. But I would approve them all. They're very well done. Well, I, I think it would be legal to have a motion to approve. You'd have to name each one of them that we were approving. Do we have to have a separate vote for each one, Bob, to your knowledge? As far as I'm No, I don't think so either. I think we can. someone can make a motion to say for the three remaining. The three remaining, yeah. unless you have something to say about the other two, somebody has something to say about the other two. <coughs> Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Thank you. So these will go into your notebook. I move that we accept ones. as written by the membership subcommittee job descriptions for the vice chair, the secretary, and the subcommittee chair positions. Second. As I second them all. Thank you. Second by Patty. 
Bob? All right. With all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. Thank you all. And let me bring your attention to your packet. That there are two items for you to place in your... I can just do that, please. Yeah, yeah there are two yeah. items to place in your manual. Um, this first one is going to be changed Again. immediately because, unfortunately, um, I'd already printed it out um, before I found out about the resignations. Um, and then the second item is the... Um, bylaws which now have added to it the segment about um, emeritus which is um, okay. section 3.2 section already voted on and what we have okay. this is just a hard copy for you okay to your, uh, rules and regulation yeah what number i didn't hear 3.2 3.2 okay this is just a, a hard copy of it we had already done that and voted on it. We just hadn't updated it and gotten it into the um, orientation manuals. I think that was the issue. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, you're going to be getting a new list of this. There are no additions to it. You just it'll just come stricken off, um, Chris and Louise. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or anything about the, uh, I think the membership subcommittee now, maybe you can help me out, but I'm, I'm a member of that subcommittee myself, but I'm thinking, I think job descriptions, that portion of things is completed now. Yeah. So, great. That's wonderful. I find it very helpful, and I, I could have commented on the chairs, but I was waiting, and then it kind of, kind of got carried away, you know, but I know that as I've been functioning as the chair, a lot of these things, I didn't know what I was doing when I started, to be honest. I really didn't. And so I, we've written this as things have come up and they've hit me between the eyes. And so hopefully it would be helpful for anyone in the future who's functioning or uh, serving as the chair. So thank you all. That's great. All right. We're moving down to C. Report uh, on the Warren items of interest, and I um, tonight the Board of Selectmen are reviewing and taking up the issue of the um, COA board size. I am planning on attending to address that and help them understand why the board has voted to um, reduce the size of the board um, as a way of aligning ourselves with best practices advocated by the state Staying. yeah so and Pam is going to be at the meeting also I believe tonight to address the tread program so um, well, anyone else is welcome to attend but we we know those two items are going to be brought up by the selectmen tonight as we talk about reducing the size of the board which I think is important I, I there's an aspect of what's coming up that that is kind of um, bothersome to me because from my experience of being added to the board um, I think I don't know if this is the right time to discuss it but I think that for an agenda item next um, month we, we, we could probably vote on it um, our process of interviewing and then um, just saying, oh, well, you're welcome to be on the board. Uh, while I stood there, people said just wonderful laudatory things, and it was just really nice. But as I left, I thought other boards and other committees and other things that I've been involved in kind of go, well, thank you for coming in. It was really nice meeting you, and we'll get back to you. And then they go into executive session or they have a private meeting to discuss whether that person would truly fit into the board. Um, because we're televised, nobody, I mean, Barry Crucio said lovely things about me and we had done some deals together in real estate. But what if he had had a terrible experience with me? He wasn't going to say that mm -hmm. in front of the town. Um, Why not? 
<laughs> you wouldn't either. You're so gallant. Um, so we all don't really have an opportunity to say, well, she's really a nice person or he's really a nice person, but, you know, I served on a committee with him and he did nothing, you know, and or um, they have an abrasive personality over time or, or anything where you get into a conversation about the fit. And I, aren't we allowed to have executive session like the selectmen or other people? We are, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. We certainly are. And I think that certain matters for personnel matters. I think, and this is definitely a personnel matter. And I'm only speaking from my experience mm -hmm. of, of it. You know, it was lovely. And as I said, it was laudatory. And I was very glad to be included. But I felt like the process needed a little tweaking. So I think that you just came up with a key word, perhaps, that we need to put on the agenda next month to review the process by which um, we interview and, and interview invite people. and invite people to join the board. Mm -hmm. I think that would be valuable. You raise a lot of good points. Mm -hmm. And well, certainly it's worth looking at and talking yeah. about, I think. And just to point out that you don't actually invite people to join the board. You formulate a recommendation and the make to the selectmen. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's the correct wording. Thank right. you. Yep. All those who have requested, because they have to request from the selectmen to be mm -hmm. made a member. Right. Yeah. But we, we write letters and, and say to the selectmen, you know, this is a grand candidate, we're happy, or we interviewed so-and-so and we say nothing about mm -hmm nay or yay and then they can make their decision but they want input from us I would imagine it's our board we're going to be working with these people they do want input you're absolutely right and the, the selectmen um, really enjoy having people from the board present so that they can that when they are going to be you know looking mm -hmm. at putting new members on a board so it's good good point Susan thank, thank you. you and then Indeed. I mean, maybe there are other issues surrounding that whole thing that might want to, you know, somebody might have that might want to um, in, be voiced if we are holding a discussion on that. Yeah. So it goes right along with the whole discussion that's going to happen tonight about the COA board size. Right. Correct. Because um, the request is in front of the selectmen. You voted last time to ask them to reduce the board from 11 to 9. Um, if that is granted at town meeting, you will immediately have two openings still because you'll have Louisa's seat and Chris's seat. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to deal with this right away. Right. That's why it's perfect timing. I probably jumped in, but no, no, I'm glad you did. It's a good thing. And you people, board members need to feel comfortable getting things out there so that we can address them. So thank you. Thank you. We also need to uh, address what makes up a quorum of the board, whether it is a percentage of the total board or a percentage of those present of, of, of those active members because you can right now we have nine we have nine members we're going to have seven members and if our nine member five person majority we're still at this point we are an 11 member board and a quorum is six six right. until it's changed when it's changed to nine then the quorum will go to five regardless of how many right. seats are filled but if you only have seven members no, we're going to nine, though. I understand that, but if you only have seven members, which we will have with the two... Oh, members, oh, I see what you're saying. It's, again, up so to that very so tight... Right. Yep. <coughs> That's a good point, too, Bob. And we're coming into flu season and all that. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether we shouldn't be considering a percentage of those appointed members to the board rather than the number required by the board. Um, my understanding is that, that you don't get to pick that as oh, part of the open okay. meeting law. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we'll look that up and make sure that we are accurate about yeah, that. Just, just. I don't think that's that. under your control. Any other thoughts along those lines? Well, and we will get that on the agenda for next month. Thank you. I have one. I, I really uh, enjoyed and respected the uh, members of the board that came before me. That, you know, they had good ideas and good thoughts, and uh, if we're cutting down the board, I don't know, just at this moment, but, you know. We We've already voted on that, though. Huh? We already voted yeah. on that at the last meeting, yeah. at last month. Yeah. 
that was voted on and was uh, a unanimous vote. Everyone yeah, voted yeah. to reduce the size to nine, yeah. not seven, but nine. Yes, well, Susan. One of the things, Louise, is that back in the beginning, this board was an administrating board, and 11 was probably really good because you got all of that input but now it's an advisory board and i think 11 becomes cumbersome okay. makes a difference yeah. yeah and the state when i went to the state training the emmett really believes that a board should be seven or nine no more no more than nine and that's what the state would like to see so we're just sort of keeping in, <laughs> keeping in uh, line with what the state would like us to do. Best practices. Best yeah. practices. And actually yeah. in the board. It's a recommendation. Right. I mean, you can. You can, but it's. You can, and it's a recommendation. But I can understand what Louise is saying, too, right. just to mm -hmm. have, it, have it on the table. I mean, we voted unanimously, but, you know, Bob had a concern, and I had a concern, right. but we did vote unanimously. Right. Yep. That should be the end of it. Right. <laughs> Leave it to Jean to just be succinct. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. <laughs> and so. if I can just say a couple words about the TREAD program, just to remind yes, people. Please. This is the tax relief for the elderly and the disabled. This is the voluntary mm -hmm. program right here. that will allow people to write a check that can be given to the town and placed in a separate fund and then be distributed to elders who meet the income requirements or those who are disabled um, legitimately through the state uh, to defray their property taxes. Um, I had several discussions with Steve Venuti about this um, and various uh, bits and pieces that will be part of the committee that will have oversight over this. Um, and I've also talked with several COAs directors in other towns about how they all administer it. And in almost every town, it is indeed administered by the COA. We will handle the um, applications. In many cases, we already have some of the uh, paperwork that people need to submit to be um, accepted uh, as an applicant, and then we'll make recommendations to the committee. And the committee is made up of the chair of the Board of Assessors, the treasurer, that's Steve Venuti, um, and three uh, community members selected by the board of selectmen. Um, all this comes under um, Chapter 60, Section 3B, Urban Delta. Hmm. So that's also going to be discussed tonight as a warrant item. Everyone seems very optimistic that this will sail through without any difficulty and then come before town meeting for a vote. How do you solicit gifts for that? Uh, several ways. One is um, an insert for the light and water. We're going to ask them to do an insert for us that talks about the program and tells people how to um, submit a check to Steve Venuti that is labeled for the uh, TREAD fund. Um, it can also be printed on the tax bills. We're also going to use, I don't know if any of you use the online payment system, but there will be a place on the online payment system that calls out, click here to make a, a uh, contribution to the TREAD fund. Um, I the also town want to will be doing this, not the COA. Pardon? The town will be doing this, not the COA, because we cannot deal on money. Oh, right. The, the yeah. checks are made out to the town of Littleton. Mm -hmm. right. And they go to the treasurer to, uh, well, they go to the tax collector who then diverts them to the okay. treasurer. Yeah. No, we don't. We don't touch the money. Um, we're doing the administration of applications, and we'll do the advertising and the advocacy for this. Quite a few towns in the, the uh, Commonwealth have done it. Are there any other questions for Pam about the TREAD program? Mm -hmm. And in case anybody asked that uh, question mark that it was the end there after board size was because we thought there was going to be a third item, warrant item, and that's uh, been withdrawn. The Board of Assessors were putting forward a warrant item to they oh, yeah. month. Okay. 
Any other discussion necessary on the uh, tread program or the board size? Nope. Let's move on then to D and to the uh, transportation gift. And, and you know, we've been doing this program for quite a while, asking for donations to transportation. And those of you who have checked your newsletters, you know, we have the, the uh, cutout now that shows up in the newsletter. I wanted to particularly call out a thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Alsop, who gave us a very generous donation for that fund. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone who gives us a donation will receive a letter back from me acknowledging that. Great. It's exciting, I think, to see that people are paying attention and are contributing to it. And that's so helpful because transportation continues to grow, I think. <laughs> the needs are. Oh, they're immense. And they. Well, when you look at the needs, it's I was just right, going to say across the board in age. Yep. yep. That was number one. That yeah, people recognize that Sorry. this is a, a car centric community. And if you, for whatever reason, cannot drive or cannot drive all the time, it's terribly limiting. Okay, now I think also if we move along to E, um, Pamela handed out, I'm looking for my copy of the yep, fall conference, the uh, MCOA conference. I think she gave, yep, everyone has it in their hand. Um, and that will be and three days in Sturbridge. And Sturbridge isn't too bad a look, uh, distance to get, you know, it's not a bad drive. And Pamela Rear is going to be one of the presenters Friday morning, the morning session 9 to 12, if I'm not mistaken. Got it right? Yep. Yeah. So uh, I would encourage people, if they can, to get to at least one of the day's events, if what, at all possible. What cost you involved? I can get you information on the cost. It depends on whether you come for a day or multiple days and whether you include meals or not. Um, I do plan to be at the conference all three days. Uh, Tina's going to cover the office this year. Um, uh, every time I've gone, I've gotten some really good ideas. Uh, Tina went last year in my stead, but um, again, we came back with good ideas, uh, things that we can directly apply to what we're doing. And this is, of course, where I found out about the whole needs assessment idea and that there was a group that was skilled in doing that. I'll give you guys a report out when I come back. Could you send the information about cost out to the board members? Mm -hmm. I will. Thank you. Do you have the information on what the wor each one of the workshops is? I'll send you the link. It's lengthy because, it, uh, as okay. I said, they don't have a short version. For every single one, it's got the name, the presenters, and then there's right. about this much description. But to choose when we want to go, we would yeah. not need to know what. <coughs> I'm happy to do that. I think as we progress along with our new, you know, mission, which has been really, it's been three years, I guess, since the board changed from an advisory supervisory model to an advisory model, this type of experience becomes more and more important for board members because if Pam got an idea being, you know, there, who knows what we, a board member might get too, as to ways that the board can be helpful in help Pam along. So and that is really part of our, our biggest part of our mission here, I think. So take a look and see if anything interests you. And I like their, their title for the conference. Making <laughs> Senior yeah. Centers a Welcoming Place for All. And that kind of ties into, I hate to say this, but it's true. The void that we all, well, I think that all of us realize the huge void that not having the kitchen has, you know, emerged as. It's just amazing how much of a void there is I not having that kitchen. And it gets back to that whole concept of the want and kitchen and families and home and that whole thing. I so, don't think we realized how no. significant it was to the whole structure. That's exactly right. I think, you know, the it's amazing. So perhaps it's a good thing that this has happened in a way. If we can look at it, that's <laughs> not really a good thing. But maybe, you know, three months of it would have been enough. But anyway. Look for the silver line. 
<laughs> well, we learn from all our disasters. We do, you know, and, and we've learned a lot about this one. So <laughs> anyway, not to malinger on that. <laughs> Let's move along to the reports. If, are we done with the MCOA? Anyway, I don't want to rush people along here. No? OK. All right. Budget report. OK, we have two, two budget reports. Uh, things are nothing special to, to look at. Um, the, uh, We're not overspent yet? <laughs> <laughs> give me time. Give me time. <laughs> well, she didn't spend it all last year, so I'm not sure she's going to be able to do that this year either. Uh, but uh, if anybody has any questions on the two reports, the mark report, uh, a couple of notes. We had 416 people uh, riding. Um, they did get a phone bill. That's a June phone bill, so they must be running a couple of months late. And uh, obviously the drivers uh, are significantly uh, doing a lot of coverage. Um, it was uh, 2,700 in July. It was 4,500 in August. And on the, on the other report, it, there's nothing uh, outstanding. So does anybody have any questions on the first two months? It's a lot of rides, you know, both months. And that's j the summer months when people tend to be off and not maybe doing as many things as they might be needing rides for, so. <coughs> All right. Can we have a motion to accept the budget reports? We have to do, that? do them all at the end. Do them all at the end? Okay, we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> and we're moving on. Any other questions for Bob about the about money? <laughs> <laughs> then we'll move on to the director's monthly report. And if I can follow along with what Bob was saying about the number of rides, um, 61 different riders. Uh, we were down a little bit in August because of the um, vacation kind of phenomena. Um, but what has been slowly going up is our number of denied rides. And in August, we had 12 times that we had to tell people that we weren't able to take them. Um, there's quite a bit of competition for certain time slots. Everybody wants to go to the doctor at 10 a.m. So <laughs> that makes it a little bit tough. Um, medical has priority, obviously, and so we've had to bump people off. Uh, who are going to Western to play bingo or, or whatever. Um, I've already talked about the needs assessment, and I'm not going to go into that in much detail, other than to point out that there were a couple of items that were revealed in the early draft uh, when Dr. Mutchler came to talk to the needs assessment people that we've already started to incorporate in terms of response. Um, one is the whole thing about elder abuse. I don't know if any of you noticed that we're starting to run a banner inside the broadcaster now that specifically calls out <coughs> who to contact if you have any uh, questions about elder abuse. Um, part of our thinking was uh, that some people would be more comfortable using the 800 number. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, everyone knew that they could always call us to ask about it, but if they have any hesitancy about that, here's the number right here. And that will be in every newsletter going forward. Um, the second thing, um, again, if you read the needs assessment, you'll see that uh, of the things that we offer, a huge majority of people said that they thought it was important. Uh, but also, again, a large number were the, I didn't know you did that crap. And so to do the beginnings of outreach to try to get the message in front of people, the October newsletter is again going to be distributed to every household um, with a front cover that's uh, specifically focused on wellness and fitness activities because those were two that were um, particularly tagged by the 50 to 60 year old and we're hoping to get them into the idea of looking through and getting a feel for what it is that we have to offer. Um, the other reason that we're doing it with the broadcaster is because overwhelmingly people use print as the way of finding out what we have to offer. Either the broadcaster, people mentioned the independent, um, flyers, etc. Uh, some people do go online, but a lot more people are still looking for the actual hard copy. So I'm going to put that right in people's hands again. Um, the friends have a, um, a very generous donor who has set aside money for us 
for newsletters, and oh. um, and that will be funded through that. Um, uh, more on that later when I, I talk about where I'm going to get the uh, board of selectmen up for. Um, <laughs> I also want to point out that uh, starting to respond to this caregiver thing, uh, Social Club is going to three days a week. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to 1. Um, as soon as we announced it, we were about half full with people who are now attending the two days and their families want them to come a third day. Uh, I've gotten a couple of really sweet notes from people um, about how important they think it is for their family members and then the other side of it being how important it is for them to know that their family members are safe during that time period and they don't have to worry about them. The respite aspect of that. What's it called? The Littleton Social Club. Social Club. LSC. I know it wasn't what it used to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, uh, and then when you run down through the numbers of d visits and what have you, you'll find that, as I said, we've got a little bit of a dip, which we always see in August, as a lot of people are on vacation. And also, I think the hot weather, uh, we noticed the exercise groups in particular really <laughs> suffered, the dance group really <laughs> suffered during that long spell of hot weather. And, uh, now it's starting to bounce back. Respectfully submitted. Why, thank you. Questions. I think that group is a wonderful, wonderful thing to have. The social club? Yeah. Yeah. I work in the office on some Thursdays, and to sit there and to hear them laugh, yeah. and that they're having such a good time, yeah. it, it, it's just what we're supposed to be about is creating an opportunity for people to to get out of their houses and to engage, and uh, they are. They're very engaged. I had one person that told me the other day, it is so nice to be able to get out. Mm -hmm. and, and that's because we have the whole package. Right. You know, once you're involved with the program, we're hooked up with the families. We offer the transportation. We've got staff there so that people are absolutely safe. Um, and then the hot lunch and then back on the van and they're home. So it really is a package deal. Um, the other thing I want to call out is I don't know how many people knew Elsie Houston. Long, oh, yes, long time right. um, volunteer for the uh, diner program. Um, she passed away over the weekend, uh, last weekend, and um, we're having a little remembrance for her on Thursday morning from 10 to 12 down in the common room um, at Shad 19 Shattuck Street. What's her name? Elsie Houston. Elsie. Houston, like Texas. Yeah, Elsie. E L S I E. Elsie. H-U-S-T-O-N. H-O-U-S-T-O-N. Right. Thursday. Thursday from 10 to 12 in the common room at 19 Shattuck Street. Um, Elsie was the model for healthy aging. Uh, she was always bright smile on her face, full of energy. Um, hugged everybody. Hugged everybody, right? Uh, yes. You know, she was, she was always raring to go. Uh, we could count on her, and she was like yeah. that right up to the very end. Um, she helped to make people feel welcome, and she's going to be sorely missed. So we just say 19 Shattuck Street. Yes, yeah, so you know where Pine Tree Park is on Shattuck Street. Yeah. Yeah. Where we're having the lunch program right now. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. As it happened, she lived in 19 Shattuck, but she the lunch program, she was there, uh, I think, two or three days a week, right, Barbara? Barbara Cam? Pardon me? She was there two or three days a week? Um, two, anyhow, yeah. At any time that, you know, Gail needed her, she would come. Yeah. Yeah. Always cheerful, always yep. a smile on her face. Okay, any other questions for Pam or comments? Thank you, Pam. Mm -hmm. We're moving along and things are happening and it's, as I said earlier, very exciting, I think. Okay, Tina. Well, the um, big news is, but it's not actually August news, but it is news that um, starting last week we have a uh, same State University intern for that's on right. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Courtney. 
Um, so you'll see her around with me. Uh, last week was her first week, and we're working on getting her um, to reach all her goals um, by graduation, May 3rd, 2016. So she'll help with a variety of things. Um, in August, I've um, been busy with the SMART recert recertifications. They're all coming in. I have 10 completed to, to date, and there's about four um, more being scheduled this week, along with the weeks following, until we start with new clients after November 1st, we'll be doing the new clients. I will be able to go out um, October 20th to meet the new SMOC director uh, for a training that will help me with all the new ones coming on November 1st, with some of the paperwork changes, some of the financial changes, that sort of thing. And we are expecting a difficult winter from what we've been told by not only the Farmer's Almanac, but other predictors of what's going on. Um, also busy uh, this month with the reduced fee transfer station stickers. I think many seniors have also noted that their transfer station sticker is going up October 1st from $30 to $35. And that rate increase will also be for the under 60s who qualify for the reduced fee transfer station sticker program. So I'm in the process of recertifying people for that. So they'll be ready to go October 1st when their old sticker expires. Okay. I'm sorry. What? I just bought mine for thirty dollars. I don't understand what you're saying. Well, um, I received a call last week saying the price was thirty-five, and it was last week. And you know, he told me that's what they would be. Um, so you bought yours last week? I bought the same time I buy it every year, every year. in okay. September, and it was thirty dollars. Boy, you got You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Count your blessings. Evidently, the October first date is because they they always. Get your stickers before October first. Right, and this year they called me to tell me it would be thirty-five dollars, and they made the adjustment on the one I had done. I had written incorrectly for thirty because I was not aware of the increase. So I bought my sticker last week. It was thirty-five. You are lucky. You, you are lucky. Don't complain. You yeah, no. <laughs> So I guess you've got a five dollar discount if you'd like to donate it back to the store. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand it. I, you know, I don't know either. Well, I mean, don't know either. That's interesting. Know Someone might have made a mistake, but that because that happens. People are human. humans too. <laughs> yes, we are human, and, and we do make mistakes. The ones that are them, and they're the ones that have the sign up, and they're the ones that. Oh well, well that's yeah. true, but still. Uh, let's make sure I. Yes. Let's make sure I pay Now he's checking. He's like, maybe I did pay 35 <laughs> And uh, we have some inquiries. Sorry, uh, for it was 35 Oh, that's uh, 35. Uh, oh good. Okay. All that fuss for nothing. Well, you would Isn't it wonderful when you have a... <laughs> well, it's a good thing. Right. It's now 35 It's a good thing you actually clarified that. We wouldn't want the uh, public viewing public to think that you you, you got, got away, away with something, something right? <laughs> I've been, I've been paying it for so long, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and as you've noticed in the broadcasters, um, we've had some inquiries out for a hearing loss support group and a decluttering support group. And for the decluttering support group, we were getting more interest in people wanting to downsize, which is a little different than what we were looking right. for. So um, we're re-looking at all of that again, and we've referred the ones who truly did want to declutter over to the Minuteman Senior Services Program that will be going on in the beginning of October through mid-November. <coughs> it looks, sounds like a very good group uh, taught, you know, being led by a, a wonderful expert on cluttering and clutter control and that sort of thing. So we have some good interest in Littleton for that. Um, let's see. And for the caregiver support group, that is that is going very, very well. Uh, the bulk of the people who attend are from, you know, the LSC group, those caregivers. But we have additional caregivers coming to that. And this month, at the end of the month, the speaker will be Dr. Megan Ford, the audiologist. And uh, light supper is provided. It's from 6.30 to 8 upstairs in the LSC room. LSD or LS? L LSC. Yeah. LSC. <laughs> yes. We're giving them LSD. It's, it's, mm. it's, 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 all right. <laughs> So, and, you know, we've got the speakers all lined up right right through um, January. They just keep uh, volunteering the speakers that they Great. look forward to coming. 
That's great. Yeah. What a great reference to the success, success of a program. Right. And I would add to that that um, we have a, one person who's attending, or actually two people who are attending the group who are not members of the social club, but they have people at home that they're taking care of. And they were telling us about a caregiver group that they go to that has 22 participants. And our group has been about 10 or so, 10, 12. 10, 12. They 10, really 10, like, 10. yeah, they like coming to our group because they feel a little bit more supported. Mm -hmm. um, but I mentioned that again as how much need there is out there. And this is wow. so invisible. So many of the people who are taking care of people in the home um, really feel an obligation to do it and they're really head down and they're concentrating on doing it and they're not asking for help. So we're trying to reach out to them and say, here, let's give you some support and some respite, some rest, so you can do a better job. I think it's interesting that people are sort of in denial about the need for decluttering, you know, hoarding. <laughs> and um, years ago, Marge Harvey said to me that she, at an auction, had bought an organizer who was essentially a declutterer to come to her house and the woman came for the three hours that Marge had bought at the auction and um, said t to Marge, you need weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Marge, Marge and uh, Henry hired her <laughs> because this was towards the end of their lives and Marge owned that they couldn't get rid of anything <laughs> that they might be able to use down the road. So uh, people don't want to own that they need to declutter. It's probably true. Why okay. are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we might use it. Being in the Someday. process of moving, uh, I'm decluttering, and it's amazing. Some stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm going in bits and pieces, you know. Uh, and it's amazing to find stuff that uh, I didn't even know I had. <laughs> and I don't know what the, I, I have all these discs, you never know we had supposedly it. songs. I don't ever remember using them. <laughs> and her house, I've been to her house, and her house is spiff and clean. So you can imagine the ones that, that aren't organized. <laughs> <laughs> even more fit and clean now, Bob. <laughs> So I, I think that's it. Wow. <coughs> thank oh, you. Wonderful. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. That's all, all of it's very exciting. This has been, I mean, from my perspective well, anyway. It's not, only, it's not only a relief for the uh, caregivers, but I think in a way it's a relief for the clients too. Mm -hmm. Giving them some independence that they didn't have being home all the time. That's just right. good for them to get yeah. out. Yeah, yeah definitely. And to have the social interactions. My son keeps telling me that I better get the house cleaned out before he has to take it over. <laughs> <laughs> you should have a son like who's that. an attorney who tells you that not only do you have to get the house in order, all your paperwork must be in order and everything must be POD. Right. <laughs> so that he doesn't have to deal with anything. <laughs> it's not fun. Thank you, Tina. Any questions for Tina? Or no, Tina does amazing work. She does. Yes, I think I think everyone in this town realizes that. I will say that everyone knows Tina, and everyone says Tina's been wonderful. You need to know that. You know, I constantly you have such that, a sweet so. demeanor and patience with people. Yep. I don't think anybody would argue with you on on that. No. Just so you don't get a big head, I don't say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know, I have to add this. She took so many beautiful pictures at my reception. She did. Not only that, but on the back, she put the names of oh, everybody nice. in the pictures. And it's funny. It, I, I keep on looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. It's right here. Everybody wants to see it. <laughs> no, very well, photography is not my strong <laughs> point, so everyone was such good subjects that that's why those pictures came out good. They, they all came up here? Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. Okay. Barbara, I think you're on. Um, well, I talked to Ellen this morning, and um, she said bingo is still going fine. They're happy with it. They're happy with the prizes. 
As long as they keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we're, we're dollar store people here. <laughs> the prizes. And um, the, I guess Bill was away last week and, you know, they had to set up the tables themselves, but um, I guess Bill sets up the tables ahead of time. And uh, that was only a misunderstanding. Pardon me? Where are they doing it? At the, um, the multi-purpose room. Down in the multi-purpose yeah. room, yeah. yeah. But they and set they up the tables. Huh? They did set up the tables themselves, right? Uh, they did, yeah. but, you know, it's but, very right. hard. Yeah. It is hard. Um, so, but it's, it's going fine, and they're, they're happy with it. Also, um, you know, the diner is what it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. It is what it is. <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> Could be worse. Could be that. Yes. <laughs> Have we had a, a decrease in number of users since we? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> the um, yeah. the the regular people, you know, that always came to the diner weekly, whatever days, are not coming over there. A few people, a very few people, are. Uh, a few people from Pine Tree Park are coming, which is a really nice thing, a good yeah. thing. Um, and they're happy over there. You know, we're having it, we're enjoying it. But, um, you know, we're people who are going to the exercise class and things like that would. I wanted, that's what, one of the things I wanted with that number. Yeah, that congregate meal number, that 250 on the director's report, yeah. that's down about 100 mm. yeah, for a month. Mm. Um, Meals on Wheels is about the same there's really no, been no impact. Yeah, Meals on Wheels is, is high. It's, yeah, very it's high. been running 22, 24, I think, one day, one week recently. But yeah. remember, what we're also missing is um, that Thursday lunch bump. Yeah. yeah. That Thursday special lunch, we were getting a really good bump in attendance yeah. on that, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, 20, 25 people. Yeah. Good breakfast. So. The yeah, breakfast. the breakfast. That's kind of That's what's missing. Oh, oh yeah, the breakfast. But just the whole tendency of, um, I, you know, I know from being down there on Tuesdays and Thursdays for exercise and seeing the flow of people, and people stopping in just for a cup of coffee type of thing, but they, that's all disappeared. It's kind of, yeah, amazing. So. All right. Um, we do not have any senior communications to report with Mary um, not present. The move all the reports be accepted as presented. Second. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> I'm um, not saying anything. <laughs> I think if we have a couple of minutes, so I'm not going to rush to Louise. I'm waiting for Louise to do that so she can vote. Nope, that's okay. I'll take a vote. All those. Oh, all those. <laughs> We've had a motion to accept the May the reports um, and seconded. Motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you kindly. Opposed? No. All right. Take a little break while we wait for Paul, I think. We're pretty well um, under control here, huh? Very good. Good. So we apologize for people that we're going to have a little. We're waiting for Paula Vella to arrive. He is um, going to talk to us about the master plan uh, process. So if you can hang in there with us, it will be good information to know, I think. What, Pam, what's the difference between the master plan and the, the here he is. Oh, look at this. He's here early. Oh, he's here early. We just, just finished. So, wow. We're all mowing, milling around. People and take a break and eat. get some refreshments. Why, Paul, would you like some fruit or oh, no, food over there? A little wine? Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Well, I'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take it off. Oh, Paul. No, I'm just going to have it's a little Gouda afternoon cheese, snack. It's Gouda. Oh, okay. Gouda. Oh, that's Gouda cheese. Good, good cheese. How are you? Louise is, um, yeah, she is. She is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you can sit here. Mm. Oh, yes. Join us. Or you can sit with your face. Yeah. Oh, glad. Well, get your cantaloupe local. Because it's a drought in California. There's not a big cantaloupe that's not there. Is that right? So I don't sit down. Oh, that's like it's very small. Why not sit down? It's a terrible thing. 
few pieces. Very water-intensive um, plant. All right. What perfect timing. Yes. We just finished the major part of our business other than your presentation, okay. and so that really worked out very well. And we'd like to welcome Paul Novella, who is here to talk to us about the master plan process, as I understand it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I'm on. You're on. Okay, um, Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board, under the auspices of the Planning Board, uh, put together a, a master plan steering committee um, back in April of, uh, excuse me, of uh, September 14 this past year. Um, so it's really just a year ago now, almost to the day, is that the two boards jointly decided to do this. Now, I say jointly decided to, there's many good reasons to do a master plan. Um, one is Massachusetts general law tells you you will have one. <laughs> Pretty good idea. Uh, and while that's nice and everything, uh, and I, I'm being tongue in cheek on it, um, a plan certainly provides us a point of departure. You know, without the plan, we don't know where we're going, we don't know where we are, so how do we get any place? At least with a plan, you know, well thought out one. Um, well coordinated with uh, stakeholders, and there's about 9,200 stakeholders uh, in our opinion. In other words, the entire town of Littleton are stakeholders in this particular master plan. And then the proper execution of it. Now, I get debate on what proper execution is, because it's very well asked the question well, the 2002 plan, which is the one that's currently in effect, how well have we executed it? In some cases, I think um, good. In many other cases, not so good. Now, certainly, as I started this with, as a point of departure, uh, that plan provided a point of departure too. And when we look at some of the um, demographic numbers that are in there, just for instance, we see that some of the projections did not hold out. Uh, this doesn't mean it was badly done, it's just as it's time to change. And we anticipate that going forward too with this, is that at one point in time it'll be 100% accurate, perhaps, uh, but that point in time will last about a nanosecond. <laughs> and then uh, deficiencies will creep in as circumstances change. But uh, so the, master, excuse me, the uh, planning board and the board of selectmen um, convened us, put us together, and made up of uh, people from various committees in town plus folks at large. So two selectmen, uh, Melissa Hebert and myself, and we have a couple from the planning board, uh, we have school committee, uh, the uh, sustainability committee, and some others, and then four at large. And when I spoke to um, the seniors, oh gosh, it's a month, six weeks ago now, um, we went through some of that, and I didn't want to take an adorable pony show here today, because I actually wanted very much a conversation as we go through this. And with that, certainly, please ask any questions we go along. But it took a while for us to get a, um, a form. It's a 12-member committee, so we needed seven folks. And it wasn't really until about April of this year. Uh, so a little bit of public math, September being the ninth month, three more months after that, April the fourth month, three and four is seven. So seven months after is when we finally got a quorum. And it wasn't only until um, three weeks ago that we were able to get Ronaldo uh, for people appointed jointly to make the 12th member so that we're a full-up board of all 12 members now. So that's been a little slow going. Not the biggest deal in the world, though, when we really get down to it, because from the get-go we said it's a two-year process. Uh, we kind of resigned ourselves to that, uh, and uh, that's the process we've been taking. So we're looking at uh, May of 17 is to be able to present at that town meeting what it is that the team comes together with. And when I say the team, it's going to be us, the people on the Master Plan Update Steering Committee, everybody in town, but then also we're going to go and contract out to a professional planning organization to help us with this. We're in the request for proposal process right now, the RFP. Uh, in fact, tomorrow night's meeting, and I'm going to invite you all to that too tomorrow evening, I'll give you more details on it, is uh, we'll be discussing a little bit more because uh, we're down to the nitty-gritty. Uh, we had a subcommittee uh, come together to draft it. We've had it through legal. It's been back through the draft process a couple more times. And all the uh, membership at large has had an opportunity to review it uh, these past couple weeks. And tomorrow evening we'll discuss a little bit more to try and refine it so that we can repair it. And looking at the end of the month to try and get it pushed out the door and uh, actually get down the street. But ultimately January 2016 to award it <coughs> is what uh, we're looking at here. And certainly some of the things we're looking at in any uh, professional organization is certainly their experience, their past experience in doing similar type plans, the successes they've had in other communities doing this, and that would be through investigation that we'll discover as to the, uh, the validity of their backgrounds in that regard. Uh, the familiarity with the town of Littleton, and we're expecting that to be somewhat demonstrated through their ability to clearly articulate what it is they know, what they've done, and what they know about us, and how they can help us when they come forward with their bids. 
as we look at that. Now, through a couple of different town meetings, the town, uh, through town meeting process, has uh, allocated $213,000. When uh, it started out of the plan almost two years ago, it was about $250,000 was that initial hack as to what we may need to be able to do this. Uh, we've refined that a little bit uh, as to what we really think we'll need. 213 is the figure now. That's going to include our own internal administrative costs. Um, Marin uh, is helping us from the planning board so that uh, we have administrative help. She's giving us five hours a week. Uh, and if you ever read our minutes, you'll see she's earning her five hours worth of work for sure. Uh, they are comprehensive, inclusive, and uh, exhaustive. And sometimes you're a little exhausted after reading them all. But she's able to take them so well. It's, it's just wonderful for us. Because, uh, yeah, obviously being a little bit uh, cute on this, but the God's truth is you go back reading our minutes and you know precisely what it is we've done and talked about all up through this period of time. So the historical record is very good there. Um, uh, going forward, I just mentioned uh, where we are at the RFP. Our vision on this is certainly to increase um, our outreach. That's what today is too. Um, we assigned a committee slash board to each and every member, which means most of us uh, have uh, at least two boards and or committees, is to go out and spend time just as this, is to speak with uh, folks on the various committees. Because each committee or board has a different constituency. And certainly there's many overlaps as to who you uh, reach out to every day, who the board of selectmen reach out to, who the school committee reaches out to each day. Um, but there's enough differences in all those is that by trying to reach out to each and every one, to include the pedestrian bicycle acceptance committee, for example, um, to get that con um, involvement, that participation. That's slow right now. Uh, some of the things we've done to try to encourage that First off, we did invite every single board and commission to come visit us, uh, and we had a very good representation. We had that meeting back in June. Uh, got a lot of good inputs from folks uh, when they visited there, and then that's a two-way process. Help us be smarter about it. We've gone out to different organizations outside of our town. Um, Harvard, who uh, recently uh, completed one. Acton, Foxborough. Um, <coughs> gosh, I forgot the other one. Right now. I apologize to you. Uh, but we've had those folks come forward to us and speak to us and tell us their experiences. Um, we, were gonna have, we were gonna have an update tomorrow night on Westfoot, but uh, Melissa's on business, so, uh, and she's the one that's been running that one. Um, but we will get an update on how uh, Westfoot, uh, Westfoot excuse me, went through their process. So incorporating and using the experiences of other towns and committees, plus as we developed the RFP, um, we ended up with a darn near 20 different uh, proposals that other towns had uh, put together and they asked for bids against those RFPs. So we get an idea as to what they were looking at, what was important to them, and so as we already know some things that are important to us, but gee, what did we miss? Because come uh, the time we award this, we don't want to go, could have had a V8, you know, so, or the Aggie salute for those <laughs> folks who are familiar with the Texas <laughs> Aggies. Um, so we're working that. We and did the uh, same thing when we did the needs assessment. Yeah, yeah. We had a consultant come in and we had some ideas of things we wanted to talk about, but they helped us to fill in things that yeah. we hadn't considered. And Pam, being the genius that she is, provides me an excellent segue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because some of the things we have already done that are Later. pillars of the master plan, the housing production plan, the open space plan, the economic development committee's been working on uh, issues as we've gone through. Another thing we're going to be looking at uh, using Boston University, excuse me, Northeastern University, through the Dukakis Center there is an economic uh, development needs assessment. So we're going to have them help us out there. Mm -hmm. And then another pillar that is going to be that particular needs assessment, the Good. other needs assessment that uh, Pam and you all have gone out to make mm -hmm. sure it happened. <coughs> it arrived in the email Friday. I opened it up, okay, okay, it's 112 pages, and it looks like it's 112 full pages. <laughs> okay. Oh, we were talking about that earlier. So, um, and I, I have gone through it. When I say I've gone through it, uh, I'd be pl plenty candid you know, rather quickly at this point, but at least get a flavor. Uh, so that was useful. And I see that as being extraordinarily useful as mm -hmm. we go forward. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Because if we look out as to the projections that they give for the 10 and 20 year projections as we look like come 2035, uh, as to what the uh, population might be, the breakdown, the demographics, mm -hmm. and the like. Forty percent seniors. And I don't know what that's like. You know, I'm just some. <laughs> 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 um, but in this, and another segue. And thanks, Reverend, for help bringing that together here, because what that's good for you all. Some folks may say, well, you know, in 2035, that, that's a few years off. You know, am I really going to concern myself with that? Well, 2035, maybe 20 years from now. But to somewhat paraphrase that uh, Chinese proverb. You know, the third journey of 1,000 miles, that's the first step. Okay. So all of us will be at least involved in that first step. 
and uh, being um, working towards it and participating in it, I think is helpful. So that's kind of a nutshell as to where we're at, um, how we've got to where we are today, and what we're looking at going into the future. And I'd entertain any questions you all may have. Well, what is the difference between the master plan that you're working on and the implementation of specific items? Are you going to be recommending specific things when in this plan? I mean, this is a perfect example where one we're interested in, but it is a perfect example. There are in this uh, needs assessment a number of areas, many of which the COA may not be able to address itself. The town is going to have to address through different means and so forth. Does that get put specifically into the master plan and uh, as opposed to us giving something to the selectmen and saying you need to deal with this transportation issue, you need to deal with the fact that you're going to have 40% seniors without the incomes that you're, you know, for your, and 65% and of the homeowners in town right now are seniors. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Uh, I, when I think economically, it's scary. So to answer that, um, I'll start at a higher level first and then come down in degrees of granularity. Uh, Mike Fontanella from the school committee perhaps put it best. It, it is an overarching guidance. Uh, it's not going to be um, you know, prescriptive in that you will do A, B, C, and D. That said, the request for proposal is, as it seeks from the bids, as to how this organization is going to help us develop some of the questions, but then some of the answers also, as to where some of the responsibilities may lay, some of the things that should be done. But in addition to identifying what should be done, identifying the resources that may well be required to accomplish task A, B, C, etc., and then also where may some of the deficiencies lie as we look at that. We may well look at some things that will come out of that and there's going to be you know, many great ideas. But as a town, we're going to have to prioritize those great ideas. And where do we have resources that we can put towards them and how uh, can we have that? That's where the discussion is going to lie when it's all said and done. Gee, you know, do we uh, add another classroom? Do we add another room for the uh, senior center? Um, are they necessarily in conflict? No, they're not. Uh, are we going to build a new fire station? You know, we already know some of the decisions that we've made as a town and how we're already spending some of our money. It doesn't mean as we go forward and we learn from this. In fact, I would expect we would alter course somewhat. I'd like to think that we're somewhere in here and that course corrections are of minor degrees, if you will, 10, 15 degrees. I just hope, boy, I don't think we're going to be in a situation where we're making 90-degree course corrections. Maybe in some areas we are. We may have missed the boat completely and you go like, None of us saw that. Or some folks get told you so, and you go, yeah, you're right, you did tell us, and we <laughs> failed. I know a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd rather have, I told you so, and then we get it fixed, than for us to remain silent and remain broken. Yeah. So, True. Th that answer for you? Yeah, I, I just, who, who, are you, who are you going to be pro providing this to? To the selectmen so that they then can implement by legislation, statute in the state, Massachusetts, it's the planning board's document. Okay. So in essence, we'll work for the planning board, but it's still a joint process between the board of selectmen. Uh, so, now, you don't raise an appropriate money in the COA. Right. Yeah. Uh, someone else has to provide the funds. You identify the need, then we're going to advocate for it. And you'll be advocating, most often it's going to be with the board of selectmen and the particular departments. Need another crossing uh, sidewalk or whatever. We're going to be working with Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Clyde's going to say, yeah, this is how we can do that, but now I need the money, so we've got to put it into the uh, budget. I, I use that, and maybe that's not the greatest example in the world. But as we look at the different needs that come out of this, and the desires even, what do we want as a town? Because what I did not mention, and it's important to do this, is we fully expect um, whoever we bring on contract to help us out with this, our consultant, is that there's going to be focus sessions, there's going to be uh, group sessions, uh, visioning sessions, uh, there'll be uh, open meetings where the entire town is invited to it. Um, you may recall the housing production plan um, might be a pretty good, and even the open uh, space uh, plan. We work with MAPC uh, to pull this. Uh, we held it at the middle school. Let me ask you, the attendance was like this. So the housing production plan that we have in the town today as far as a result of inputs from the community is minuscule in all candor. Well, where a lot of the results went into that are folks who were already involved in town, certainly the selectmen, the planning board, 
um, housing folks. Uh, but as far as a community-wide involvement where a lot of people came together and said, this is what we'd like to see, that didn't happen. Now, certainly hoping very much, yeah, hoping and praying, is that we get a much larger turnout. And I'm saying a larger turnout. You see for the Cook property, we had about 500 people or in change. Because it was advertised. True. And, and they, it made the rounds. Not so much that it was advertised, people talked about it. Mm -hmm. It certainly, it was published. In well, it was meeting, in the papers. In the papers. And so has the steering committee. Uh, board of Selectman meetings, we mentioned it. We mentioned it at planning board meetings. So folks are able to see it on TV there. Uh, mm -hmm. I had some uh, things in the news. But you're right. But more importantly, it was the word of mouth. Facebook, for example. Now, we do have a Facebook page. Uh, we're in the nascent stages of that um, being produced. But the thing is, and that's part of this outreach. So when you go home this afternoon, you may get on the email and go, that's some idiot talk to us today. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he presented a couple of good ideas at the very least. And here's what they are. Um, but very sincerely, is that's why I'm here too, is not just for you folks, but that you spread the word also, you know, to be the disciples, so to speak. One of the things that came out of our needs assessment is that people 50 and up want their news from hard copy, not mm -hmm. from the internet and not from Facebook and not from Twitter or Instagram or all of those things. They want to read it in the independent, read it in our broadcaster, see see something, um, The Little Sun, Action Unlimited, whatever. Um. Now I'm going to ask a question because uh, you, you raise a good point about the uh, response. Because man, Those are voluntary responses. So uh, you know, I'm not going to get nitty gritty of the statistics and the plus and minus uh, variables and all involved there. But for that particular question, when you said a good number of people wanted those over 50, like see hard copy, those people who responded in hard copy, a bigger preponderance, did they break it down by those who responded in hard copy versus on the web? You'll get a chance to ask Dr. Munchley that question next week. Okay. Next Monday night. <laughs> hypothetical without knowing the answer. Okay, I filled out here, and I said I'd rather get mine on hard copy. I filled it out on the web, I'd rather get mine electronically. But there were less web fills than, than hard yeah. Copy but it's fascinating that our younger people want it electronically. Our older people want it high copy. Yeah, well, that'll change. And if more that. people are going to become older and live in the town, uh, are we going to the electronic age? Or are we going back to the? No, the I think we'll move forward with yeah, them being electronically. But right now, with us, it's yeah. a transition. Yeah. It is. Uh, and I know even with the study, I was sent it in the mail, and I have it on my computer. Mm -hmm very difficult to read 111 pages and and, uh, and keep at it. Uh, I'm going to borrow a hard copy so that I can go through it right. the old way. Uh, you know, th 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 it's a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. right, you know, I do, have a, I do have some of the numbers for that. If you look at just the age group 50 to, to 59, 34% um, of those who responded said that they looked for information in the broadcaster. 32% um, said they looked in the Littleton Independent. Um, and only 18% said they looked at Facebook or other sites. And then it drops sharply off when you get over 60 to like 5% said that they look at Facebook. Oh, I first started that. reading that on here. Yeah. Oh, gee. Oh, good yeah. luck. Yeah. <laughs> I did too <laughs> on my iPhone. Holding it sideways. I'm seeing it on a 17 inch and I'm having trouble. <laughs> um, well, I'll be candid with you. I said I started <laughs> looking on here. As soon as it came across, I said I got to find out uh, at least the initial piece of this and started uh, page three. You get a hard copy oh. next week, aren't you a lucky well, one? Well, the thing is, um, I don't want hard copies, personally. No, that's just my, personally. In fact, I've been trying to get the Board of Selectmen go electronic and... Uh, can I give you a hard copy? They're not going to kill me when I say this, but I'm going to say it out loud anyway. That the Board of Selectmen meeting, I said, you know, I mentioned the last 18 mm -hmm. meetings we had weighed the paper from the last 18 meetings was 21 pounds. Oh, so, you know, 1.1 pounds of paper per meeting, uh, time however many of us are involved to get hard copies. Yeah. That's it. We got the school committee to go uh, electronic only, but uh, I got to get the board of select. <laughs> um, it's a transition. It, it's some people, you know, it's going to be, because how am I, how do I read, how do I learn? You know, do I learn best by seeing, mm -hmm. feeling, touching, hearing? Each of us are different. Mm -hmm. um, and I can understand exactly why you're saying what you do, because I still work with a lot of folks who will print out stuff at work and you're like, what are you doing printing this stuff out for? We've got computers all over the place. You know, we've got computers. We're wireless in the building. You, know, you can walk from room to room just carrying the computer and start typing away or reading whatever. But 
That said, who lives in town and what are the needs? So when we talk about the needs assessment, if I need to be able to read it in a hard copy, we've got to be able to provide it in a hard copy. So we've got to understand that too. You can't just be, eh, too bad, so sad. <laughs> yeah. You're old. Never mind, never mind that. Look, look at the broadcaster. Every month the broadcaster comes to me electronically because I requested it. I get it electronically, I print it out so my wife can read it. <laughs> <laughs> but from the government's perspective, we save money, so that's good because it was your paper and your printer. Right, it's my paper, exactly. Yeah. Um, but by the way, uh, I'll call me one opportunity. That is an excellent uh, document that you all put out. Uh, I, I find it extraordinarily useful. Broadcaster? And, yeah. And folks that you know, certainly rely on the information you put in there, mm -hmm. um, whether they're getting hard copy or soft copy, uh, it's got to be proved very useful. Now that said, so we provided some information, but do you have the resource to take advantage of the information? To your point about transportation. Mm -hmm. Let me segue into that, because transportation is important. Um, the last mile, you may have seen some of the advertising about uh, Crosstown Connect and the Lieutenant Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito was out here, uh, was it last week? Um, Labor Day week. Yeah. Um, to um, sign the compact with us and four of our surrounding communities. Um, and that, in essence, is how do you get somebody from the train station to work here in town, that reverse commute uh, thing. One of the things, and Keith has been working very, very hard on this quite diligently, is working with the MBTA, for example. Let's get an earlier train. Getting the second track put in on the Fitchburg line is absolutely instrumental to that happening. So pretty soon we will be getting that earlier train. So rather than it being about 8.30, now you're already late for work, uh, if you're taking that reverse commute, we get that train in here at 7.30 or so. And if we use the IBM example, three miles and change from the train station to the um, building, and you may work at least by 8 o'clock in the morning. And from uh, an employer's perspective, good, I want you here working. But how does he get you from the train station to the IBM place? And that's, and that's the things that work on, you know, well, what kind of bus system? We're not going to have a uh, downtown Boston type bus system out here in the suburbs. I mean, we know that's not going to happen. You know well, you know, with the senior bus as to um, the challenges you face with it. You know, well, whether a third bus is useful, uh, what is it going to cost to get a third bus in uh, labor and equipment costs, uh, the frequency of use, and then certainly as more and more people make it known that they want to use that, you know, how are we able to uh, afford that resource? And then we get to that prioritization scheme I mentioned earlier. We prioritize that above something, and what is that something? And I had a discussion the other day with someone who was talking about the the uh, parking at the train station just in, in terms of if they, even if they use their own car. Yeah. The, the, the difficulty of having enough spaces and people illegally parking and, uh, and, uh, and, and they were talking about here and air and uh, West Acton, uh, all of which are having the same problems. They can't, there's evidently a Christmas tree farm which they were trying to buy. Turkey farm, yes. And uh, uh, put in another parking lot. In fact, uh, oh gosh, it's got to be, it was still snow on the ground, or it was a kind of a sleety, snowy day, so was this past winter. I was out there with Keith and folks from the MBTA, and uh, again, Keith working hard to get them out there in the first instance, and indeed they did, and uh, they were quite sympathetic, and not just sympathetic, but uh, I'm convinced that they're really trying to do something about it. Something's not all that easy. The space that exists where the uh, train station is on that side of the road uh, is problematic. Putting something on the other side, uh, right now that's uh, private property, and what might we up to there? But then you have to have people cross the track. Uh, so there'll be some safety concerns. The jerky farm area, as far as its suitability for certain sort of builds, um, you know, how deep can you go on the ground with the uh, <coughs> ledge that's in that area? But from a parking lot perspective, uh, they were trying to brainstorm some possible alternatives as to maybe another 80 slots or so. Because you're absolutely right. And in fact, you know, it's going to be on TV, but uh, certainly the police are very sympathetic to the folks' uh, plight as far as parking goes out there, and I think it's been. Um, I thought Nordblum owned some more land that could Say be. That again, please. I thought Nordblum owned uh, Roger Nordblum, who sold the land to the parking lot, owned more land, and there could be a second parking lot behind what's already there. That looked. Um, as far as contractual relationships, I don't know, but as far as engineering issues go, it seemed that there was going to be a degree of difficulty oh, okay. in what it would take to be able to turn that into parking uh, because of the terrain. Yeah. And really. I remember at one point years ago they were going to build a parking garage, but then it turned out we had some sort of rare salamander on the land. 
they couldn't fill. Yeah, I think there was a different location. Something. That was the MBTA station on the other yeah. side. Side, right? The, you know, roughly the 30, other 000. side. The other side of the last mile is the first mile, mm -hmm. which, if again we had some sort of transportation mechanism, instead of having to go to the train station or park, yeah. you could get there. So we had to come park in town, so to speak. Well, or just for people in town. Yeah. But the other problem becomes the one that you were talking about, and that is that just getting around town. For seniors, um, the number of rides that we're providing to people to go to the hairdresser, to go to the supermarket, uh, uh, as well as to doctors in town, never mind going out of town. Uh, and that whole thing of how do you get around town, you know, yeah, I don't think we're going to have a, a, a transportation system like the city of Boston, but I think we're going to have to have something in order for people to survive and live here, especially if we get, and I hope we will, get some apartment complexes and or the kind of uh, downsizing for seniors that will allow them to uh, to remain in the community um, without having the burden of a, a full-size lot in, a, in an own home. At one floor, easily accessible, uh, into the building and out of the building itself, but then from the building to uh, resources in town. Right. And this sort of conversation is the conversation certainly open to see with many more folks and then definitely with our professional planners. Because these guys are going to be able to put some things together and then when they certainly put it down on papers, is how do we somewhat codify the conversation we're having now and have actionable deliverables out of it? Um, you know, we could talk to a blue in the face, but gosh dang it, if we don't put it down on a piece of paper mm -hmm. and then fingers in people's chest, you're responsible for this, you're responsible for that. Uh, just like any business plan uh, that we do, and we have this action plan as to who's going to do what. I think you're going to be amazed at how well our needs assessment is going to inform your master plan. Mm -hmm. I right. really stars I so elderly. Too. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it, perfect timing. <laughs> no, I see it. it is, uh, again, back to Pam's genius in timing it. Yeah. This is all happening. <laughs> <laughs> it really. It really. Uh, it's something that we knew we couldn't do on an amateur basis. We had to do it, and the town was willing, thank goodness, to provide us the funds to mm -hmm. to do the needs assessment. And that, and for, I read a portion of it. I'm on the committee, and I, <laughs> as I said, that 111 pages is daunting. But to read the summary, the, even the executive summary, and begin to see, uh, you know, some of the areas and say, oh yeah, that is so true. Yes, yeah. and, uh, and it's. It our needs assessment is specific to 50 and up, but I think it transcends age. The, the, these are human needs. This is what a community needs, a community of all people. Um, we, we, the questions were aimed at the senior population, but um, I do believe that it, it does transcend that. I agree with 100 that just using the parking at the train station and the first mile, you're 25 years old, you live in town, and you got a great job down in Cambridge or Boston. You can drive down there each day on Route 2. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. might get there by 2. Well, it was interesting. The Globe had an article yesterday, and it was talking about the number of families that are moving out of the places like Harvard, and they didn't happen to mention Littleton, but they mentioned a lot of them around us, back into the Brooklines and the Newtons and so forth if because they, they want to be it. close to the city. Now, that means reduction of school um, needs out here mm -hmm. and more school mm -hmm. needs in there. Uh, you know, just reading the article, I began to think about mm -hmm. what things, and, and you're going to have to deal with that in your master plan, too, if that's actually the case, that we're going to lose the, the family uh, types uh, to those who want to be close to the city. Oh, they're building all those houses. Having right? grown up in the 60s where they all wanted to That's get out. I was going to say, it's sort of reverse of all of us in the room of that generation that it was the flight to the suburbs. Right. Now uh, it's a flight to the city. Uh, good luck in Boston, too. <laughs> and I grew up in a city, and I went to the Boston schools, and I had a great time, but I was in the 50s and 40s. I did, too. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we lived in the Me same too. place for a while. My dad was the Boston policeman. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But it's a, it, it's, it says a lot of things, that the same thing that we're talking about for the next 20 years of the number of seniors being a part of the community. It's also a shift in realities if, if it's going to mean some kind, and I don't know what that it is, but I, uh, you know, uh, a significant shift in the need, school needs and so forth and so on, and what are the priorities that we have to deal with. I don't envy you at all with trying to, <laughs> you know, anticipate. 
true, um, but I, I got to be honest with you, it's exciting yep. uh, to be able to participate in this. And well, I said, um, you know, every 10 years we're supposed to have a plan. The notion we're going to talk about is 2030, because as I said, two years or so. So come May 17, where we're all say, yeah, here's our blessed plan. You know, 2030 is 13 years later. Well, we've been sitting on this one for 13 years. Uh, maybe we'll try and be a little bit more aggressive uh, next time around, or perhaps our successors will be a little bit more aggressive. And, uh, well, really, I mean, obviously, we feel we need to have some successes, especially in the senior issues, um, just because uh, we have more and more of them here, and and we need to address those needs um, in order to, to you know deal with human beings who we deal with every day. I guess the good news out of this is that as we are all aging and living much longer. In many cases, it's a healthier life too. Um, yes, it's not a debilitated sure. sixty-five-year-old. You know, uh, in many cases, sixty's the new forty. When I can remember, <laughs> yeah. and I know a lot of it's perspective or perspective. As a ten-year-old, you're looking at someone sixty years old. He's old. You know, uh, now good, good, sixty. He's young. <laughs> We have our 107-year-old uh, uh, town resident who's an active member of our social club. Yep. She's here two days a week. Amazing. She's amazing. Yes. <laughs> and that's not becoming that unusual anymore. No, it isn't. But There's a lady in town, I won't say any names. Uh, let's start to narrow the field down. 95 years old. At Mass one day, dropped her book effortlessly, and at least seemingly. Reached down, picked it up. And did not miss a beat. Uh, it's really like, pretty wonderful. <laughs> um, okay, I said we're on Facebook. So anybody who's on Facebook here? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> it says you're something, does it, huh? <laughs> Doing. I don't want people I to am. know. <laughs> um, but for yeah, folks watching is. on television, she is okay. too. Um, Littleton Master Plan Update Steering Committee. So if you search it, you'll come across it. Uh, on there, we have a little bit of synopsis as to what it's about. Uh, we have a schedule uh, for our meetings uh, through, uh, I think we're through uh, April or May of next year. We've got the schedule laid out as to when we will meet. Um, and one of those meetings is tomorrow night. Most often it's in room 103, and here's the exception. Tomorrow night is the exception. We're right here in 307, uh, just because 103 was not available. Um, but at the very least, and then if you have access to the web, certainly you can go on the town's website and look at the Master Plan Update Steering Committee and uh, you'll find information there also uh, about us. Now you say, well, gee, both of those are web-based and we already had the conversation about paper. Um, we use the independent uh, somewhat, but we know the independent's reach is not all that great, uh, so that's not the best thing. I am going to ask uh, Pam more uh, officially as to how we can, because I mentioned the broadcaster, you've all spoken about it, I think it's very successful. Uh, how you can get the word out in that also, and we can talk more as to what's the best way you see fit to use you that. You had mentioned focus groups and forums, and um, if you can get us dates on those things uh, in advance, we'll get them into the broadcast, and we we'll go to bed the tenth of the month before the following month. So we're just putting the October broadcaster to bed now. And, and you do a, almost a down your daily output too. Yeah, at least it we seems. can also get it into the email. Yeah, we do our, our yeah. weekly blast. We have both the wellness blast and the um, what's happening blast. What time is your stirring? Committee? 7 p.m. Thank, great question. Thanks. So tomorrow night, uh, which will be the 15th of September, 7 p.m. here in room 307. Please come on down with the ideas, and you'll certainly hear some of the things we've been thinking about. And it's just 12 of us. Uh, although that said, the demographic is pretty good, although um, as far as gals go, uh, it's only Melissa. Uh, it's all guys otherwise. Um, but of the group, um, the age split, well, Melissa's the youngest, I think, <laughs> so and I won't say her age. Um, and then up through, uh, who would be the oldest? Who would be the oldest? Mike Zeldin, perhaps. And Mike Zeldin's one of the uh, at-large. And Mike's only been in town three years. Jumped right in. Um, Ronaldo, um, he... As he described himself, he has a um, Italian first name, Japanese surname, born in Brazil, <laughs> and he's nearing completion of his U.S. citizenship. Oh, yeah. wow. uh, so uh, he, he told, shared that with us as uh, he was uh, signing up to be on the committee. Um, so, and then 
everybody in between. You know, so you know Mike Fontanelli, you know Peter Scott, you know me. Um, let's see, uh, got to think some other names off the top of my cranium. I know them all. It's just that my memory is trash. And has did Weatherby do, join? It has nothing to do with age. <laughs> did, did Weatherby join? No, no. Uh, Ronaldo became the 12th guy of lacrosse. Uh, Ed uh, Cocondale, um, Joseph Occiello, John Blyfeld, Paul Glavy. So a lot of these names, Peter Crowley, Rich Crowley, excuse me. So these are folks you know. So you can see what kind of the um, breakup or the makeup of the committee is. Is to but he's just like, how did he get on? You know, well, glad he's on, whatever it might be. And if it's the for first, you know, the former, how did he get on? Come on down then, please, and help us out. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Well, certainly, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I call. ask you, please, spread the word, <laughs> advertise it. Uh, so, if on Facebook to your friends, please go on there and like the page. Because what we're going to do is we will use that page also to send out blasts. So, if somebody that's already following obviously makes it very easy, uh, they'll receive those emails. <coughs> but then you can also invite your friends to like the page so that they can become involved. So you say, well, it's only two out of the group here in the room, still it's two more than we had before, and then the friends that you have out there. Uh, I would not say restricted to Littleton residents, although obviously Littleton residents are the ones most likely to benefit by it, but then also we want to use that tool to help to benefit us. And what I mean by it is folks with good ideas. For example, I've gone outside of Littleton to some people I know are involved in this sort of activity in their own towns, and that maybe as they see what we're doing, they can offer their thoughts too and help us out there. Mm -hmm. So that way we get uh, a bit of cross feed from other localities. Um, or, and if you do it the old fashioned way, you know, where you go to the wall, pick up this thing that's heavy and clunky, and you can knock someone out with it and go, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and if you're going to do it that way, do it that way too, please. It's that's amazing that young children will look at. I have a friend who has an old phone. Um, they don't know what they are. They have no clue. <laughs> well, no. Well, how do you make it work? There are no. <laughs> they don't know what dial the phone means. No. no. At least it's not. <laughs> <laughs> My mother had one five. of those. <laughs> Or they don't know what to pay. There were, you know, pay phones are non-existent right. now. Right. But, you know. So. And party lines. Mm -hmm. And Littleton used to have Central. When my husband was growing up, um, the little kind of Victorian gingerbready looking little house by the Unitarian Church, that was Central, where the operator who <laughs> did Littleton was. Major connection for you. Yes. Thank you, Paul. I just wanted to tell everyone, um, I got the agenda for tonight, and at oh. 7.45 is when they're going to start talking about the Warren items. Okay. 7.45? Right. And we're about halfway down. Um, they've set aside from 7.45 to about 8.40. Oh, okay. So What's the name of the plan, Littleton? What? What's the name of your group? The Littleton Master Plan. Master Plan, okay. Update Steering Committee. 7.45. And that's on Facebook too? Yep. I've looked up at it on the web, but I never thought to look on Facebook. We don't have a web page. Um, you know, web page, you know, it's certainly it's easy to create one. Excuse Keeping me. content current and flowing there becomes more difficult. Right. Um, we may well migrate to that and have one. I don't know the answer right now. Because uh, it just takes somebody as a content manager. The Facebook, we feel it's, that's a much simpler uh, tool to use and keep it uh, reasonably updated. So uh, that's why we're going to do it right now. I talk to friends on Facebook, but I never thought to look at that. So, there you go. But your agenda is the minutes will be posted as usual on town website. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. So if I don't know about meetings. Yep. In fact, I, well, thanks for bringing that up in that context. You don't have to be a member of Facebook to go to Facebook. You can go on the web. You know, Facebook and read our page. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ever oh, so, so much. much. Absolutely my pleasure. Yes, no, it's been informative. Yeah. It really has. We'll all get handouts. Master plan. <laughs> Coming up, and it is perfect timing for for us and our needs assessment, you know, information too. And I, I'll leave it with this. The master plan that we will produce on May 17th is not the master plan update steering committees. It's not the planning boards. It's not the board of selectmen. It's all of ours. 
-hmm. by all of us participating. That's right. a whole and that's critically important. That's really yeah, that's people. You. People need to hear that and yeah. and offer their thoughts. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So let's end the meeting. <laughs> Is that a, mo a motion to adjourn? <laughs> so moved <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> Seconded. Okay. Well. Well, you're going. The meeting has been adjourned. Yeah. What? The meeting has been adjourned. Um, all those in favor adjourning. Aye. 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 You voted aye. I guess we're adjourning <laughs> without adjourning. <laughs> no, all those moved opposed, none. Oh, okay. Okay. You, you just missed here. that part. What do I know? Any abstentions? No, I should ask that all the time, huh? <laughs> but they, I knew they all voted. I have to say no, they didn't vote. You didn't ask for the vote. You yes, I did. 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 I did.